From Tuesday to Tuesday of this past week, law enforcement investigated at least nine deaths in and around Albuquerque. Now, for a city that, at least in the halls of government, has been trying to buck its reputation as a violent place, that's tough news. Joining us to discuss it is this week's opinion panel. From the Associated Press, reporter Mary Huditz returns to the table. Former KKOB 770 AM radio host Jeffrey Candelaria is with us as well. Former State Senator Eric Griego is back too. And a familiar face with a new job. Congratulations, Laura sanchez Reve. Get this, Senior Director of Government Relations and Regulatory Council with the firm, Inc. Congrats. Thank you. Well done. Good to see you back here. Now, Mary, you spent a lot of time covering crime. Does Albuquerque feel more dangerous, or is this just one of those tough weeks? And I want to ask that in the context, and we'll get to what the mayor and the chief of police have proposed for crime fighting here, for gun violence, but just on the week that we've had, what's your sense of it? Yeah, I tend mm -hmm. to look at um, statistics more than my own kind of... Mm -hmm. Yeah, sense these days, okay. but um, so it's too early to tell okay. on that. But I mean, the headlines, yeah, the headlines, this was a stunning week, especially sure. I think um, we're going to be talking about gun violence, not all these, the cases that emerged were gun violent related, but mm -hmm. there were some some um, cases involving children. And so right. I think that was hard for the city this week, mm -hmm. multiple cases. Absolutely. Let me stay with children. you to kind of follow up with that. Your sense of what the mayor has proposed, does this get directly to the problem of gun violence here in your gut, or is this something that's more overall good police work? Or how did, how did you see this? It's something that's expected. Okay. Um, they had been pretty clear at the end of 2018 that they were going to lay out a plan, mm -hmm. pretty much just like this, mm -hmm. that was multi-pronged with technology, and then um, maybe I hadn't heard the community response uh, TAC, which is where they'll send out teams to communities affected by gun violence or a recent crime. That seems like common sense. Um, it doesn't, or it doesn't seem like a huge leap. But um, this was the mayor, I think, trying to put it all out in a little more detail than mm -hmm. he had in mm -hmm. the past. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. Senator, good to see you. Glad you're back here. Nice um, here. I know you're a busy man, so we appreciate you taking the time out. Um, I'm curious, as I, as I look down the list of crazy stuff here that we're dealing with, you know, crime is broadly down, to be fair to the administration, but non-fatal gun violence is up. Are those two things exclusive to each other? Do you know what I mean? Well, they're, re they're related, but yeah. I think, I, I mean, look, uh, gun policy, gun legislation is a state-level issue. Uh, we had some big strides in the session, but yeah. any time uh, Mayor Keller or any other ma mayor says, like, I'm going to keep this on the front on the front burner, and I'm going to keep talking about it. You know, the mayor of Pittsburgh made a pretty bold, uh, took a pretty bold stand uh, in mm -hmm. terms of, you know, and of course the NRA is pushing back, but, um, you know, we have a we have a serious poverty problem, a drug addiction problem, uh, a domestic violence problem. That's right. uh, you know, uh, but when you add guns to that equation, um, it becomes a lot more lethal. And we do we do have uh, we do have a serious problem with gun violence in the city. Right. Um, so. And in the state, you know, we're still we're still uh, you know way above the national average. We're in the, in the top ten in terms of uh, gun fatalities, uh, gun-related uh, uh, murders. And so, um, so the question is, what what can a mayor do? What can a city do, uh, especially in the, in, the, in the state's biggest city, to, to to do this? I think what he can do is send a pretty clear message, saying things like, I think the most important thing I heard in this whole. A strategy was we have to keep talking about gun violence as a public health issue. We have to collect our own data. Mm -hmm. uh, to Mary's point, like, in t until we know what's really going on, um, we ha we can't shy away from talking about it because politically it might be a little bit dangerous, you right. know. But there has to be some there there, and so I'm hoping that um, unlike uh, sadly our 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 chief law enforcement officer at the county level who has said you know there's no problem, we're mm -hmm. opposed to this, we're opposed to the background checks, which is just. I mean, that's the, the lowest bar possible to pass a background check. So, no, we have some great new state tools, you know, with those two those two bills, uh, bills that passed, that's background right. checks, and then yep. really looking at domestic violence, which is a huge problem, and try to take try to take guns out of that situation. Right. I think it, it will make some huge strides. But, I mean, first and foremost, we just have to be honest that we have a problem. Mm -hmm. Houston, mm -hmm. there's a problem. I appreciate the mayor going straight there with yeah. that, too, yeah. and just saying we... And not shine away from that's it. Right. That's right. That's uh, right. Laura, interestingly, as I read it, they're talking about you know, technology, using more tech, but there's a lot of other things. We've heard concerns from our communities today. We're rolling out a multi-pronged plan, and this multi-pronged plan, as you read it, a lot of it reads like just good basic police work. Do you know what I mean? Like good detective work to solve crimes out there. 
Were you moved by what you read about what you saw, rather what you saw right. in this plan? <clears throat> well, it was a little surprising that some of the things that were listed weren't already being done. Right. So I'm not sure if it was that they weren't being coordinated with other agencies. Like I, for, for me, uh, the information sharing aspect of it was important mm -hmm. because there is um, unfortunately uh, a tendency to keep information within the agency. Mm -hmm. um, if you're doing a little more information sharing with uh, BCSO as well as the district mm -hmm. attorney's office, I mean, that could help in general in terms of a coordinated plan. Mm -hmm. uh, but some of the other stuff that was in there seemed um, sort of like a no-brainer. Right. That should have been happening already. Hopefully there's more of a focus now in terms of targeting mm -hmm. those resources mm -hmm. and making sure that there's more of a partnership with the community. Mm -hmm. So I think that, um, y you know, it's good that there was a, at least a an effort to bring all that under one plan. Mm -hmm. um, and I think now that, the, that that's been established, I think the community is going to be watching very closely to right. see if, if, if the goals are met, yep. and that there's actually a decrease in some of these uh, incidents. Good point there. You know, Jeffrey, the idea that, you know, community policing has been around for the while. The governor, our governor, current governor, is very much for this. She's been pushing for this as well. As, as you see it, is this, you know, it, it, let me throw one more thing out there. We hear a lot that it's the same perpetrators doing the same violent crimes out there. It's a very small percentage of people out there compared to the whole crime picture. It, does this get to that problem as you read this, this proposal? Does it get there? as a solution. Well, Dolores, but I, I assumed a lot of this was already happening. Right. Interdepartmental, you know, cooperation, information exchange, that kind of thing. Sure. The technology piece, I thought, I assumed all that was happening. But for me, I was struck with, and maybe it's a function of me growing up on South Broadway and, and experiencing mm -hmm. a lot of violence, gun violence as a kid. I was really gratified to hear the mayor talk about gun violence as a health issue. Okay. And it's and, and kind of a more holistic approach to uh, you know dealing with the issue and not treating gun violence as a singular violent crime act right. but a more complex extrapolation of something maybe that has root causes to Eric's point maybe mm -hmm. uh, domestic violence drug abuse mm -hmm. so this holistic approach is something I think is is refreshing mm -hmm. he's got uh, plans to deal with things prior to violence happening so saying out loud there is more violence on mm -hmm. south broadway or the southeast heights and not being afraid to say well i shouldn't right. say this out loud because it's politically incorrect it's clear that there are certain areas of albuquerque where this happens so i think that's sure. important the other thing that really struck me that was mm -hmm. important is i remember growing up we had a lot of violence on a 7-eleven on broadway and gibson mm -hmm. and after the folks would come and deal with it police and so on the community and us as kids, we were still traumatized. Sure. It's, it's yeah. odd to say that, but we were scared. No, it's not but at part all. of his plan is to revisit communities right. after the fact. I think that's a really important thing okay. because I think it, it also engages the community such that maybe you garner more cooperation to talk as witnesses or be more apt to say, I saw this or that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's important, revisiting. I can't believe I'm saying this out loud as a Republican, but traumatized mm -hmm. communities because there is an anthropological, psychological trauma mm -hmm. in a community or a neighborhood when, when violence happens. So I was really most gratified with the revisiting of communities. Yeah, and, you, and I think that the idea, I mean, I just think one of the more valuable, and it may, may be symbolic, but just to sort of acknowledge that we're going to talk about this and right. we're going to talk to communities and families and kids about it, right? You know, That's right. I mean, we had a lockdown. We had a... a we have a, a, what is stay in place what's the what's the term they use it where you have to sort of um, shelter in place, shelter in place. Right. and yeah. uh, you know it happens periodically at schools it's becoming so commonplace culturally oh it's just kind of you know for kids to have to deal with that but two things two other things we haven't talked about mm -hmm. I think are important part of one is the fact that law enforcement is leading this idea of we're going to be re we're going to really be an active partner because ultimately right. police shootings are a factor of law enforcement not knowing assuming that everybody is armed gotcha. everybody's armed criminals everybody's armed you got to like at all point and, and that really had affects their decision making right. right so some of those tragedies that we've seen um, <laughs> and the second thing is you know law law abiding gun owners who are collecting guns and are amassing guns what we find what 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 was part of this whole strategy is when there's a break in Mm. Guess what the number one thing that a lot of these folks are looking for? They're looking for guns. Right. And if you're a private law-abiding right. citizen, but you have a, you, you're a gun collector, and this has happened to, to many people I've, know, I've known, mm -hmm. they'll, 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 they'll have their guns stolen. And then we have no idea. Now there's 10, 15, 20, 25 guns out there, yep. um, and these criminals are able to get them. So I'm hoping state law will take part of it. But having law enforcement mm -hmm. setting the tone for, for, for really being uh, for responsible gun ownership is going to be really important. Mm -hmm. Laura, I'm, I'm curious, you know, 
we can't speak for the public here, certainly, and how they receive this, but is the public, meaning Albuquerque, we need something. There's a built up frustration of where crime has gone here that we just can't get past seemingly the last eight or 10 years. Is the public gonna be satisfied with this? Or again, is it gonna be about results like you mentioned earlier than anything else? But there has to be an effort before you can get results. Right. Well, I think know? that um, I can't imagine any intelligent member of the community is going to be satisfied with just a press conference. I think that it's right. important to note that at least there was a coordinated plan. Mm -hmm. um, there was an effort, there was an acknowledgement that there's a problem. But I think that there's gonna be an expectation for results. And right. so it's not enough to just have a press conference. There's gonna to have to be a continuous um, effort to try to make sure that results are met, mm -hmm. um, that there's a you know that there's a connection to the community and I think just in terms of how the public reacts I think the media also has some responsibility here in the mm -hmm. way that it portrays a lot of these issues yep. um, unfortunately you know I do a lot of traveling now with this job out of state um, and it, th there's gun violence everywhere but right. I think that in New Mexico there's such a fishbowl effect right. um, on some of these issues and 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 there's so much of it that gets um, turned over and every single news story then becomes about that incident. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that makes it uh, that much, I think it ra raises that level of anxiety for the public. Mm -hmm. um, whereas in other places you hear other types of stories. And I think that that's, um, there's just an important element there for the media to take yeah. um, note of sort of where we are as a community. So it isn't so much about, you know, if it, if it bleeds, it leads, this yes. mentality that that's the sole focus of a new story. Glad you got that in there. Mary, you got about 30 seconds left. What's to say about Chief Geyer and his attitude about all this? He's a little bit different for chiefs we've had in the past that weren't so forward on these kind of things. Well, Geyer has been, mm -hmm. um, uh, that's an interesting topic to raise because mm -hmm. he was one of the few um, high profile law, for law enforcement officers in the state or leaders mm -hmm. who was pushing the gun legislation at the state level. Right. So it's, it's. Um, I guess I hadn't really thought too much about what sure. you're asking, but it's mm -hmm. not a, was not a surprise to see him advocating then at this press conference right. for this plan that he has, and that he's there. I would assume when you lead a uh, lead a department and you see these, you have an initiative like this, you're going to start measuring your officers on, I internally. Right. That's right. So yeah. It's about ownership too, isn't it? It's not just the mayor's idea, but it's the mayor and, as Eric said, the mayor and the chief's idea. So there's a part ownership there for APD. Yeah, he'll well. be carrying it out. Yeah, interesting point there. That's all the time we have for Albuquerque Crime. Up next on the line, the Energy Transition Act redefines renewable energy use in New Mexico, but what's the cost of that?